if this was any other business and if the director had such poor results and had consistently not hit any of the K K KPIs that he had set out, he would be fired. Um, I don't think he's the right man for the job. He hasn't been for a while. And I don't know why he's still around. Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces. Welcome back to House of Rugby URC. We've got another packed show for you this week, guys. As always, I'm joined by the lovely <laughs> Megan Williams and Greg O'Shea. <laughs> Good to see you, Jason. Not that short sleeve shirt, though. The guns are popping. <laughs> Thanks. But we're also joined by a former teammate of mine, Leinster, an Irish international, and recently a player who has made history with the Barbarians women's squad. It's Jenny Murphy. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on, Jenny. Great to have you on, Jenny. Yeah, we'll ask you 10 questions now in a bit, but I think we should get stuck into the weekend rugby first. Yep. The main game was Leinster v Connacht. Um, incredible game. 47 19 win to Leinster. I yep. thought Connacht would do better, to be honest. They were 7 0 up at half time, but you were actually at the game, Jenny, weren't you? What'd you make of it? Yeah, um, wrapped up. It was absolutely Baltic. But um, <laughs> yeah, like really, really entertaining game of rugby. I think um, Connacht know how to get a win in the RDS. Like, it's been a while. It's, it's difficult for, for teams to get a scalp there, but they did it in early January of last year. Yep. Um, and I think Andy Friend, like, he's, I highly rate him as a coach. I really like how he utilizes, utilizes the weapons he has. Mm -hmm. um, but that lineup that Leinster put out, even on the bench, was it was always going to be a yeah. tough ask at the end of the day. Yep. Yeah, star studded Leinster team, to be fair. And guys like Mac Henson were, was playing unbelievable. He got yeah. up against Jordan Larmer, got the first try. Yeah. Jack Carty was playing incredible. He was creating tries for fun. But it's just Leinster were too strong in the second half. The amount of tries they scored, like just That's off the top it. of my head, Ring Roses, yeah. Deegan's. Dan Sheehan, that yeah. lad, honestly. The yeah. battle between him and Ronan Kelleher now for next season, I just can't. What do you think with them, them two, Dan Sheehan and Ronan Kelleher? Oh, like two extremely dynamic hookers. Um, and, and, and having them battle it out is only going to be positive for both Leinster and for Ireland. I think like when you're, when you're kind of fighting for that jersey, it only makes that better. Like any competition is good and it acts as a catalyst for all these one percenters and you want to kind of constantly get better and it can be it can be really kind of positive in camp as well and um, obviously there's a little bit of differences like at the end of the day like in open fields they can do a, an awful lot of damage and we've seen that you know at the weekend yeah. with with that step was phenomenal but he's just such a an athletic presence and then Kelleher's he's an absolute wall <laughs> um, so I think I think for them like it'll be really interesting to see who kind of really grabs that Irish jersey. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, you can get really distracted with all these amazing open play things. But like if you're in the front row, set piece is predominantly what you need to be kind of nailing front on. Yeah. So I think it's consistency there and. But like it's going to be a nice battle for the coming yeah. years. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Jenny. Like you're right about the competition that they have in week in week out. Probably the training sessions they have would be similar to them playing a game like every single week almost, you know, in that training sessions, like because it's such a high competition, whereas mm. the other teams might not have that during their training sessions and um, the fight for those jerseys, but like you're dead, right? Playing against international yeah, and Lions. That's it. I think before we keep waxing Irical about Leinster, like, like Connacht fans might feel a bit aggrieved if we don't mention the the Orm McNulty incident with, with Ryan Baird. So we have a clip here we're gonna tee up and I'd be interested to see your thoughts on whether or not this should have been a try or if Leinster got away with it. So he does unbelievably well here to skill to catch it, to chip ahead. Bard kind of fumbles it a little bit here. Uh, I mean, we have a replay coming up here as well. Um, it's probably, it, it, you can see it better from the other angle, but apparently, like according to the, the TMO and the linesman, Bard kind of grounds it with his knee, but like, he's not, he doesn't physically ground it. If anything, he accidentally grounds it, but there, I suppose there is no clear evidence there as well that Nutty touched it down, but mm. yeah. I think Leinster got the benefit of the doubt, guys. What do you think? I'm kind of sh showing my ignorance here, I should probably know, but I don't think you can actually touch it down with your knee, can you? Yeah, can I was going to no, say it, that. I think it needs to be like yeah, yeah. downward pressure. Down with pr yeah. Control downward pressure. Like, I think we, we kind of sometimes forget that Bard is like, he's a lock and he did remarkably well <laughs> to like <laughs> yeah. get in front and get there in the first place. But um, I, I, I probably, if I was a Connacht fan, I'd be, I'd be fairly annoyed and frustrated by that because I, I, I do feel like yeah. they probably. They probably did get the try. That's there. early on yeah. as well. Like the yeah. game was pretty close at that stage. So Connacht would have got an early lead there. And like I know, look, I mean, 
I know Leinster ran out with 40 plus points in the end, but you score a try that early on the game, it could have been a completely different story. Exactly, yeah. And Oren McNulty, you'd be fuming if you were him, like, catch that ball, chip it over, and the, arguably, I, said he, I would say he finished it. Like, that would be yeah. highlight reel for him. He's playing unbelievably well. He, he gets only a second start for Connacht as well, isn't it? Yeah. That was the game of the yeah. weekend. Like, there's just two Irish teams. Every try, because obviously we're picking try the weekend every week, and I was just like, every try in this game is really good. The Josh van der Fleer line had to come in and offload. I don't know how he got that offload away mm. and ring rose to finish it. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Just what did you make of the game, Jason? Yeah, I've been mean, like, as I said, it's just to see Leinster every week. Like, you knew, like, I know we said it about the All Blacks a few weeks ago. Like, when a team like the All Blacks lose, they come back and they don't lose, but they did lose against France with Leinster. I mean, when's the last time we saw Leinster lose two games in a row? It yeah. just doesn't happen, mm -hmm. and where you look at the players that they brought back in, and it was. I feel sorry for Connacht because Connacht are buzzing; they're doing well at the moment. But he said, when you're bringing like five, six internationals back into your squad, five, six Lions. Yeah, you're right. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, like you said, he ha they had a really good first half, and I thought they played incredibly well. And like we mentioned, Mac Hansen, like. He's definitely by far one of my favourite players now. Like he was absolutely everywhere, yeah. and there was a great bit of competition between himself and Jordan Lamar on the wing. Yeah. Um, like J Jordan Lamar has been very quiet. I think you know there's yeah. not been much talk about him because everyone's been talking about Mac Hansen and yeah. what he's bringing to the table. But you'd forget about Jordan, but he's been yeah. incredibly well. Yeah. Mac Hansen got up on him uh, yeah, for the first right. try, yeah. and then you can see Jordan was a bit deflated from it. He got, but he got it back. He, got it back. he came back. in and he cut inside yeah. uh, Mac Hansen, but then. To be honest, Dan Sheen was the best winger of the day. <laughs> he did it, Mac Sheen. Uh, to get Mac Hansen like that, like he's no slouch, and to go in out, like it's just you'd be proud of that as an yeah. international winger. Like so, yeah. um, he was a winger of the day for me anyway, Dan yeah. Sheen. Back, <laughs> yeah. now, back to the back to the top of the URC, but uh, obviously we're gonna have a break in the URC for the next two weeks heading into Champions Cup. So um, Leinster are gonna face Bath. So I mean. Bat are not having a good season at the moment. The Premiership they've shipped 60, 70 points there. I think on three occasions they're rock bottom of the league. I wouldn't be too confident if I was a Bat fan going into that. Seeing a Leinster team putting yeah. 40 points past Connacht coming into the Champions Cup. I think all they want for Christmas is a win, like <laughs> a singular, win. which is really like it's not. Yeah, it's not. I, it's not something I'd look forward to if I was in, in the Bat squad looking looking forward to like. To facing that Leinster squad because they will not forget that loss last week either. Mm. Like Connacht, great, like taps on the back, but then it's on to the next one. Um, and I can't imagine Cullen um, letting any kind of complacency or the players in at that stage, especially when it's Champions Cup as well. Like it's 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 the competition that you want to win and you yeah. want to do well in. Yeah, that's obviously a Leinster's ultimate goal. Like they haven't won it now since what? Is the 2019 was the last time they won it? Like that's something they want to. That's mm. something they want to get back. Yeah, is that yeah. Champions Cup title because as many Pro 14 and URT titles they get, nothing beats Europe. Yeah, well I can't see them getting beaten at the moment. Like they're all their players seem to be fit. Like they're all playing well. As you said, they're coming off the back of that loss. They're still a bit annoyed. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't like to be that bad next week. Yeah. yeah. We're uh, talking about Connacht um, a little bit more. Just what are their chances now? You know, after that loss yesterday, we've tried spoke about them before. You know, being really inconsistent with their wins and losses. Yeah. What do you think of um, their chances now in the URC, Jenny? Like, I think, again, like I know I've kind of mentioned Andy Friend before, but I, I, I highly rate him as a coach. He's got a bunch of really resilient players around him that have played for other, they like kind of want to show their, their wares. You've got like the likes of Sam Arnold, Arnold Tom Daly, um, who are, I think they're, they're more than capable of doing some damage. So like, you kind of just kind of regroup, learn from that. Like, yeah, it's a tough loss, but then you look at like, there's lions on that team. There's potential lions in terms of like, you know, Andrew Parter, Porter. Um, he should have been at the Lions tour. He was kind yeah, of injured, yeah, like just really unlucky things. So like, and then it's an away game as well. I know these are all like excuses and they won't be kind of like let into the squad, but I do think that Connacht are a team that you have to be you have to be careful of. They're a dark horse and I think underestimate them at your peril. Like they're able to do a lot of damage and they play some really mm. lovely rugby too. I actually and thought Connacht were really good at the weekend. As you said, yeah. they, they played Leinster in RDS after Leinster came off back of a loss like, you know, and to score 20 points. Yeah. 20 points, just under 20 points against Leinster in RDS. Yeah. Incredible. And all their tries were, were very, Sam Arnold's try was class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Connor Oliver's try were off the set piece, Jack Carty. They had a lovely set piece move and Mac Hansen straight back into Conor Oliver. Yeah. Like, you know, really good tries. And um, it just came up against a strong Leinster team, just the way it is. I think there's one try we forgot to mention as well was the, the Leinster try that was finished by Max Deegan. I think that was probably the try of the day, kind of team wise. It was an incredible team effort. I think everyone touched the ball. I know Dan Sheehan's effort was the individual 
you know, brilliant try, but that was an that was an incredible try by Leinster. Yeah, it was. It was a great uh, step off the left foot to go to break through off the first line of defence, and then they just finished it off. Nick McCarthy with the Sonny Villa at the yeah. back. Yeah, 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 very good try. Leinster are just in, in flying form. So yeah, they were much better from last week. Like they just seemed a bit had a bit more heart, a bit more ruthless in in that contact area, which they didn't seem mm. to have last week against Ulster. So they obviously got mm. a good talking to. Um, but the one, one thing might one thing <laughs> might be that they didn't really bring that until the second half. Yeah. So it might be something that they're only still kind of picking themselves back yeah. up. So. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens next week, but I can't see them losing against Bath. Yeah, I actually think Connacht will fare in the Champions Cup, guys. They've got um, Staff Francais in their first game at home. I mean, that's going to be an interesting affair. The, the lads in their pink jerseys coming over to the sports ground. <laughs> in know, December, as well. In December, I don't think they're used to much of that. Like, but Staff Francais, like, they have a decent side. Like, they got the likes. They brought in Lau Mappe there to start the year. Like, there's a guy who should be starting for the All Blacks, but isn't. But uh, what do you think? How do you think they're going to go? Um, like, I think sports ground is it's a difficult place to play. It's loud. There's some serious, passionate fans. Um, and... You know, Connacht have a really good streak at home, so um, I'd probably be leaning more towards Connacht getting that win. Yeah. And like, I can't imagine a lot of the that Parisian team yeah. particularly enjoying the nice S- sideways <laughs> rain, sideways yeah. rain in Galway yeah. sports ground. Not many teams can uh, adapt to that very quickly. Yeah, it's <laughs> a secret weapon, like playing out, being able to play in a sports ground. I've played there a couple of times. You've obviously played there a couple of times as well. It's disgusting. Like. <laughs> Honestly, and in December as well. Oh my God! Uh, I'd say the Stafford and say, lads, be like, I don't mind if I don't get picked next week. <laughs> yeah. But at least thermals. You're now, you're allowed to wear thermals yeah. now, yeah, so geez. maybe yeah. like. I'm yeah. not sure how I think about thermals. What do you think of them? Like I'm all for them upper body, but like yeah, I don't know on the body. legs. Some kind of like unless I, I I get like with the the 3G pitches and the 4G pitches maybe because you get like absolutely destroyed. Like yeah, there's, you like, do get bad burns, but it's not you a bit terrible. Delicate, are you like, Greg? In the no, what I'm saying. I'm used to the cold weather, but like I just think. Greg loves exposing the knees. <laughs> like, I yeah. just think, the take legs. the burns and like you can't be wearing yeah. leggings. Like there's a few of the yeah, Ospreys. I already said yesterday it. that the guys in the Dragons game, which I'll touch on, they were wearing leggings, yeah, and I was like delighted to see them wearing leggings. Well, they didn't do too well, so yeah. they didn't work out. Yeah. Well, I'd love to know. Is it except, obviously like like Greg might disagree, but I think it is acceptable to wear it in 4G pitches because you're getting torn. 100%. But if you're playing on a regular pitch and it's just cold, is it acceptable to wear leggings? I, just, <laughs> I think it's just the because old. Because yeah. you're allowed uh, now. That's a tough one. It's the but, old rugby head of me come from my dad and my granddad and my own shout out to dad shout out to dad talk about my dad again but like I think it just it's like having the socks up kind yeah. of thing you're like it just looks wrong to me but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll warm to it eventually Jenny, you gave just me loads of sticks you weren't allowed to wear white boots and I will continue yeah. to give you sticks always <laughs> anyway let's move on there's move some on. more games we need to go through so we don't have Darren here last week who obviously is a big Ulster fan and they lost now this weekend yeah unlucky Darren I know 19 <laughs> uh, 13 um yeah, Ospreys. And I have said Ospreys have been playing brilliantly throughout this, this campaign. So, yeah, a huge, huge win for them. Disappointing for Ulster. They didn't seem to get on the front foot. They yeah. didn't take their chances when they need, when they should have. Yeah, they just good. really struggled to get the, the score. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a boring yeah, enough game, to be fair, like mm-hmm. compared to the Leinster Connacht game. It was just kicking and there was yeah. a lot of penalties. There was a yellow card for Luke Morgan early on. Um, and he actually came back in and made up for that towards the end with a good uh, carry and then he eventually scored off Morgan Morris, I think his name is, the number eight. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch the game? Yeah, I watched a good bit of it. It was, yeah, again, it was kind of like mixed bag, um, especially in the first half. I thought Ulster, they had plenty of possession, plenty of territory and maybe like hindsight's a beautiful thing, but there was a lot of kickable penalties that they turned down that could have really swung it. Yeah. Um, not the best kicking out of hand from Burns either. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, a bit disappointing. And then obviously set piece towards the end of the game when there was injuries coming on and off and yep. people having to play out of position definitely made it a bit more difficult too. But, like, again, you're kind of like that. I know we kind of harp on a lot about, like, the consistency and stuff, but, like, coming from a really strong win against Leinster, yeah. you kind of want to do the simple things, like, go out, do the simple things right, be mm. smart, and then kind of build yourself into the game. And it never, mm. it never really seems to happen. Um, so yeah, it's kind of disappointing the highs of that, and then coming down mm. to get a loss in Swansea against like a really strong Toby Boot side. Like I thought, mm. Marler was really good, controlled the game really well. So Ulster as well, they actually dominated the, most of the game, but their stats were huge: 529 meters gained, 60% of the possession, 63% territory, um, and Ospreys were forced to make 246 tackles, That's which is huge. That <laughs> yeah, so on paper you thought Ulster would have won. So kind of goes down to your point. 
point, Jenny, in that they just didn't take their opportunities. But maybe they're not too far off keeping that performance level. It's just like the last couple of plays. Because that's, they're unbelievable Jeez, stats. Like, to have 60% and make them made 250 tackles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're, not too, they're not too far off. But um, Jack McGrath was back playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so shout out to Jack McGrath getting back on the pitch. Yeah, good to see him back. Like he's had a horrific, long way out. Yeah, he's been like in and out for a while now. Like I mean, he's I think he hasn't really right since that 27 line story. He's kind of yeah. been in and out. He's been he's struggled big he's time. Back, was it? He's had a, he's had a yeah. few injuries. He was back as well, but he's had a few different injuries. Like, but it's good to see him back on the pitch because that guy when he's motoring at the top of his game, yeah. as we saw, is one of the best loose heads in the world. He, and who knows, he might force his way back into the Irish front row, even though it's one of the most competitive front rows in the world at the moment. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but speaking about front rows, Ulster had a bit of an issue, didn't they, with Eric O'Sullivan um, in the match? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, Eric O'Sullivan had to eventually go in as, um, as hooker for, for, for Leinster because they lost Eric Roberts, Roberts and they lost for Ulster and they lost Tom Stewart to, to injury. So, uh, his, his first scrum, unfortunately, didn't go too well from a 69 minutes on the clock. You know, they're only six points point at this stage, good position yeah. and... But he's, you know, he's a prop by trade, like so. He was emergency hooker here, so yeah, give of him course, give him the benefit of the doubt as well. So, yeah, I mean, straight away there, it's it's unfortunate, uh, especially like you're getting to that stage of the game where there's only ten minutes left. Set piece is huge. Mm -hmm. Ulster within a try, you know, and then they ended up getting a line out then a couple of minutes later into that close. I think they're inside the twenty-two, and uh, that doesn't go too well for me. Either. Yeah, he tried. It's not. It's actually a decent throw at Eric O'Sullivan. In fairness to him, yeah, um, you can see there he's number one. Like he's a prop. So it was called for crooked, like. But I mean, do you think there's a bit of a uh, subconscious out of the ref there being like, "This is a prop thrown in"? Like that, I've seen such yeah. worse throws. Well, I think that's worse. Point. Like I think that's, I think that's pretty solid. Like again, a different angle. But yeah. like coming on, if you've played how many minutes, having to jump in in a different position, like yeah. I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, like prop and hookers, it's a completely different position." Yeah. Even like. Setting up and out, I know nothing about the dark arts of the scrum. <laughs> I just look and I'm like, that looks aggressive. And <laughs> every once in a while, I'll be like, ref, they're boring. But like, I'm, I'm yeah. chatting so my arm. you've been playing in a number eight, though, didn't you? Oh, I've been stuff. hanging out the back, but oh, we don't do much. Like, it's all the <laughs> Number eight, five. you just touch yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. Just yeah. carries on. here and there. Yeah, yeah. yeah not even a touch. But no, that was a decent throw. I've definitely seen worse than that. And I'd say what didn't help is that Ospreys didn't go up and compete. So it looked even more so like it was just one sided yeah. Ulster. Poor old Erica Sullivan. But I actually would start putting the blame a little bit on the coaching staff and that like they should have gone to uncontested scrums like do you know what I mean I think did, did they have to put Eric O'Sullivan in the front row I don't think they had to put him in hooking the, they? he could have put him in front row but he I think he would have been able to say that he didn't have experience hooking and yeah. so it would have gone uncontested so you still have 15 on the field he can still be around the park yeah but and you retain your ball but I think it's a lot honestly like as in like McFarland, like yeah. maybe backed him and maybe he backed himself as well. Yeah. So it's just like it's a tough, it's a tough yeah. position. Just to being be honest, there. and then there's just come on, be smart about it. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just think, like it obviously backfired for him, and I know I'm getting a bit opinionated it could now. Could be pride a little bit as well. Like you don't really want to go uncontested yeah. scrums. Yeah. Like, you know? like shot themselves in the foot. Like, mm. and this poor Eric as well. And that's tough for him. I threw a couple of balls in when I was playing yeah. sevens, and it's not easy yeah. like at all. So yeah. tough for him, and uh, also came away with a loss, unfortunately. Yeah. They had one yeah. more opportunity then as well with Nathan Doak, like putting that kind of questionable, contestable kick up in the air and in the Ospreys a, 22 giving, it, well. giving it back to Ospreys like so I think overall their game management was just a little off and uh, that's kind of been Ulster's downfall a lot, a lot over the last couple of years like mm. I mean we've seen Ulster this year like they've, they've gone out like and they've been unbelievable but they've beaten Leinster they've won some huge they won their first four in a row or five in a row four, they've lost yeah. yeah and they've lost like two out of the last three now and it's just yeah. I don't know if that is that upper management or is that onto the players for what's going on with them kind of mentally, but, yeah. but as, as we said, like they dominated the stat sheet, so they're not a million miles off. Maybe yeah. it's just the top it's two the inches game. get the head head together. So yeah. I'd say they're not too, not too bad either. Like yeah. other players, like Stuart McCluskey had a great game. He was offloading for fun. Robert Balakoon played well. Yep. Timney played well. So yep. um, I think they'll be all right. Just a uh, mental slip up from them. That's it, that's yeah. it. Look, we're going to take a, a break from the rugby now because we've got some lovely questions here. It's going to be your favourite part of the show. Oh, God. <laughs> They're going to be fantastic, right? So um, I've got the first question here for you. So this uh, came in from uh, one of your teammates, basically asked us to ask you about this. So could you tell us about the sheep that you had to mine on the Babas tour and what happened? <laughs> oh, God. Where's it going? So, uh, so on a Babas tour, everyone gets, everyone gets a little sheep to mind. And if you're the youngest player, you get... That's the sheep there. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, it's real small. Like so, most people hook it to them, uh, like, yeah. and you have to keep it on you at all times. But if you're a newbie or you're young, you also have a different sheep, a much bigger sheep, a sheep that's easier to steal. 
and you as well need to as use the as well as so the smallest. Two. So you've got two to mind. And if it's someone just a little calls, toy sheep, so. it's a little toy sheep. Yeah. And if someone calls Baba's and you can't produce it after five seconds, the sheep police write it down and you get fined at the <laughs> end of the hilarious. tour. You're so joking. you get absolutely done. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> my sheep went missing day two. Oh my god! But um, which one? Did they the, the, I only had a small one. I only had the small oh, one. To yeah, mine. But I used a sock and just confidently like put my hand up, and no one really looked for for, for a day and a half. But eventually, I got found out, and I got Brilliant. absolutely destroyed. So you got a fine. <laughs> I'm sure you got a fine for that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I got several. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Oh. Trust that. you to lose it. <laughs> Are they drinking? No, because your legs. Oh, yeah, they're. Or yeah, monetary they're, fines. They're 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 drinking fines. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But just to follow up before we move on to the next question. Like, what was it like to play for Barbarians? Like, I mean, it's such a famous tour inside to finally have a women's game there now. It was the record attendance in Twickenham for a women's game, nearly thirty thousand. You absolutely smashed them. I mean, and like you scored some absolutely crazy tries. It was just, I say, it was an incredible experience, was it? Oh, it's amazing. Like I've been so lucky that this is the second time that I've got to do it and to do it in Twickenham Stadium was absolutely phenomenal like and the players that you normally play against and are normally trying to like you know batter the head off and then you find out like oh they're actually all right they're actually pretty sound <laughs> or whatever it's oh, it's it's so lovely like you you gel really quickly really intensely they pick like such deadly human beings as well and um and then you kind of get like exceptional coaching but coaching that's very like how do you want to play the game? And you, they, they want very much to play with like passion, flair, courage and spirit. They're like the barbarians kind of ethos. So it's they want to win, but they want you to do it a certain way. So they like we were allowed to kind of like make up any kind of moves like so you could see some NFL stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just really good crack. Like it makes you fall in love with the game all over yeah. again. It's good because like they know they're dealing with internationals like they like you know what I mean like they can they can let it off a small bit and go okay look guys we know you're well able to play rugby so I have a bit of fun but at the same time we want to win yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much so. like, yeah. and what was it like playing in front of thirty thousand people obviously the last two years has been weird not getting crowds at all so I say that was incredible it was mad like so our kickoff was meant to be at half five with the men's game ahead going going before us yeah. um, for a double header and there was COVID in the men's camp so we found out maybe 95 minutes before actually Jesus. we're going on, uh, we're, we're headlining. So there was panic <laughs> in the hotel room. We just finished breakfast. They were like, right, you're going to have to go have your pre-match meal. And the bus wasn't going to get there in time. So a lot of the English girls were like, Uber, get on Uber right now. You're joking. Yeah, no so we had, to get, we had to get taxis to Twickenham Stadium. So there was water, there's water bottles. We were jammed into taxis. We had like this, everyone was on WhatsApp sharing the live location, seeing like oh, how close we were to the insane. thing. It was so funny. And then our, our, our taxi driver, Kiri, was like, so are you going to the game? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> do you have good seats? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah. a great story. It was, it was, it was different, yeah. How didn't that come out in the media, or did it? <laughs> I think some of them did, yeah. There, yeah. Was, there was cameras there that caught... It was some of the girls' last games Jeez. playing at that level, so uh, there was a few cameras you that You took it well, because I can only imagine, if that happened in a, uh, like, top... Like, 15s men's, I'm presuming, they'd all be giving out stink. Like, they'd be like, what about my pre-match meal? What about my this? What about my dad? You all sound like you just, like, took it in your stride yeah. and just did it, got, up, got on with it. That one, 60 yeah, points like, over. I think it's kind of like, you just have to kind of roll with it a little bit. Like, yeah. come on, it's them and you're playing with your mates, and it's a little bit of a different journey than you would normally expect, but, like... You took a couple hours yeah, off your, yeah. like, pre-match prep. Yeah, it was grand. We just had a few more of the caffeine gels and That's maybe amazing. cut down on the coffee a little earlier, but it was still good crack. Like, yeah, yeah, no one complained. Just, no, no, it's just kind of, you just get on with it. That's like, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit just taken aback by that, because yeah. I just know the 15 lads <laughs> be giving out stink. What do you mean I have to go on early? Like? <laughs> oh, but the women, they look so professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got, and you've also, probably, you've got, you've you've got more time for shenanigans post-match as well. So there you go, yeah. You're out in the beer quicker, so happy days. Yeah, time to find your sheep. Did you ever find it in the end? Oh, no, some fecker still had it. it. Yeah, some did. Yeah, they definitely, definitely. did. That's <laughs> Anyway, moving on. We can talk about this for ages. Yeah. Um, O'Hannigan55, that's his username. He wants to know, do you prefer playing in the back line or in the forwards? Because you played number eight for Leinster, didn't you, this season? Yeah. Um, oh, Janie, I actually don't know. Um, I was chucked in at eight for Leinster just to do... Like, I just go where I'm told. Um, <laughs> and it was a little bit... 
a little bit clueless, if I'm honest, um, especially when it comes to Line 8. Yeah. But um, well, I really enjoyed it. You're kind of a little bit more involved in the game in some aspects. It can be a little bit more abrasive. But from playing at 12 yesterday and last week, it's it's lovely to have that little bit of extra space. I think, I know I'm kind of sitting on the fence a little bit, yeah. but there's definitely there's definitely things I like about playing centre mm -hmm. and things I like about playing at eight. So I'm going to just kind of be like, I'll, I'll go where I'm told, as long as it's not front <laughs> so row. Such a political I'm answer, I'm not I know, taking that. I know, it's like, amazing that you can express yourself in like both like positions, because they're just completely so yeah. different. Like you're just well, yeah. well class, Jenny. So coach rings you tonight and goes, we're playing tomorrow, yeah. you, can have, you can play 12 or eight, which one do you want? Oh, oh, 12. I probably there we 10. go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Off that fence. Yeah. <laughs> right, move on. One of. Uh, really Graham... shot by the forwards group now. <laughs> oh. um, so, Graham Reynolds would like um, you to tell us about how fantastic a coach Adam Coyle is and if there is a little backstory there. Adam Adam Coyle, um, I coached with Adam with the, the NACE women's team and he's on, the, he's on the NACE men's team as well. And great man, absolute legend, um, both on the pitch as a player on the sideline as a coach and in the bar on the set. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's he was actually on the under 20 squad a couple of years ago that beat the New Zealand and they got to the um, to the final against England. So yeah, he's a he's a a mentor, a solid mentor that is. He doesn't care about the game or the results. All he cares about is scrums. That's his passion. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm going to get slagged for that, but I'll, I'll put it right there, yeah. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Um, Kelly would like to know, what age were when you started playing rugby? I started playing rugby quite late. So it was Gaelic, um, Gaelic football and soccer would have been the big ones. Um, did swimming, but just kind of focused on not draining. Wasn't any good of it. <laughs> Um, so I was, I think I was like 19 or 20 in, in uni. I just saw the college team train. They, I studied over in Twickenham. I thought it would be a good way to keep fit and it would help my Gaelic, um, Gaelic football. And then I just, first training session, I was thumping into people and loved it. And I was like, oh, this is something that I'd really like to give a proper crack. And it, it kind of snowballed really, really quickly from there. Um, and then I think a year and a half later, I got trials for Ireland, so it worked out. Jenny, I remember playing against you in the UK. You were playing for Richmond at the time. I, th I think it was only one of your first matches, and I was playing fullback for the Saracens. And I just remember you hoofing the ball. Everyone's like, give it to Jenny. <laughs> then I kick it, hoofing the ball back down. I think you probably kicked me about four or five times, and I was like, oh my God, what is this girl doing? <laughs> like, you were unbelievable then, but like you knew you were, you were, you were new at the game. Oh, um, we had a coach that had to stand behind me because I'd moved from the forwards to the back. So I started in the yeah. second row, they were like, no she's clueless, so let's put her where she can't like balls it up too much. And that would have been maybe one of my first games. And the poor coach had to stand behind me go, OK, go left. Left, go up, go up, like... <laughs> no I remember, I remember it so well, because I remember the, the big, the big, the big hair, the bottom yeah. hair, and I was like, this girl's amazing. That's interesting, because she... Huh? Did you catch the ball, she kicked you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's interesting. I ran she, away from her, because she, she was like... <laughs> you see, a, a lot of the, uh, the women's internationals are coming from yeah. GA backgrounds. Like, I mean, obviously, it, it helps you a lot, like, because obviously it's through a can of boot came from anyway, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, like, and it's definitely a big... Gaelic hoof as well. There's you could you, my coaches kind of honed it and improved it a little bit. But yeah, I think like I think we, especially in the women's game, it's definitely something that we don't use to our advantage as much as we should. Mm. Like you see the likes of Harlequins women's team are really exceptional with their kicking game, mm. and in Ireland maybe not so much. And like early, the, there's some really strong players both in the forwards and the back line that could do damage. Like a few a few Gary Owens um, yeah. in the game. Like it's it, it's so different and it's not utilised as much as, mm. as the lads. So I'm kind of like all for like these are the skills that they've built since they mm. were like Definitely, yeah. really young. Like use it. Yeah, football yeah, is such yeah. a skillful game. Oh, 100%. 100%. It should be used. Yeah, some yeah. of the best footballers are, are unbelievable rugby players. Just natural skills mm -hmm. you have, which is incredible. Yeah. Next question is from um, Coleman is the name, and we'd like to know all about your bad injuries and how you dealt with them. Oh, bad injuries. You've had a few of them. Okay, how much time? <laughs> <laughs> Give us uh, your worst ones. My worst ones, I had a double back fracture and then the, the knee, I, I did like PCL, ACL, double meniscus, all in one go. Oh no, yeah. no way. So fairly, so fairly did a bit of damage. I was going to say double back fracture there, the so blasé, as, in, like, as if it's a, just double back fracture. Yeah. I mean, that sounds absolutely horrific. I want to talk yeah. about both of them. We talk about the back first. How did yeah. you, you manage that? Um, I actually don't, I don't, we don't really know. They think that like, so I went, 
I was in the gym, it was with Sevens, I was with the Sevens team, and we were in the gym, and then suddenly I just felt really intense pain after doing a... Squat. I think we were doing, no, planks with weights or something stupid. And I was like, shooting pain, finish the set. Of course you And then, it. like, because you're like, kind of like, you just think hell? it's a muscle or something, and you're like, I'm nearly done now, I can't stop, whatever. And then it was in DC, DCU, the, so the stairs to go back up to the offices, and I really struggled to get up the stairs, like to lift my legs off the ground. Thought I'd pull something. So did the coaches, did a fitness test the next day. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, perfect. and um, was like, obviously it was brutal and just like really painful, then struggled to like move my arms properly. How'd you go on the fitness test? <laughs> <laughs> like probably better than I would have <laughs> to be fair. Uh, and then I went for an x-ray and yeah, too fast it's gone. Oh and Or God. one was half gone, one was fully gone, just floating around. And awful. that was 16 months. I remember months. when you were going through oh, it. Oh, grim. 16 months. 16 Jeez. months, yeah, it's grim. Because we used to, do you know how it is when you're injured as well? It's, so, it's such an isolating time. You just go, you see everyone through passing because you go up to do your rehab and like it was this tough time for you Jenny like and you've come out on the other end like the best way possible as well like you just got play, player of the season with Leinster there the other night congratulations, congratulations very much. and you've yeah. just continued to build and build from from those um, awful injuries that you had you've been incredible yeah, so like so pain play. threshold like the fact sorry I'm just really like taken yeah. aback by the fact you finished your set and then a fitness test and <laughs> you too you say pain threshold I say now nice, stupid oh my <laughs> like, god and then you yeah. like 16 months are out for us. That's a serious injury. Yeah, it just, it kept on. I thought I'd get back sooner and I just kept on having setbacks and then I had to have like some little surgery and stuff and they said I wouldn't play again and which was devastating. I remember like... Heartbroken. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, gutted. And then, okay, like, okay, well, I'm going to... I set myself small goals. And it, do you know what? Like, as crap as it was, I... And I wouldn't like to go through it again, but I'm so glad I did because I was so grateful to to be able to then get a second chance to play. Yeah. So it was it was kind of like it made me it made it easier for me to make a lot of decisions. I didn't enjoy sevens. I left after that. I rehabbed and was like not enjoying this. Fifteens is something that I grew up watching. It made it easier to kind of leave. Um, and then also you, you get a lot of stuff from that as well. You're like, okay, I am mentally strong, I do have a bit of, resi I do have resilience, I have grit. So when the knee went, it was kind of like, okay, I've done this before. Yeah. Like, let's kind of tip away and kind of go again, like so. Mm. And like, so every game I play, whether it's club or like in Twicket or whatever, it's, I'm, I, I do Great now, I do look this around. This is a bonus. Yeah. Like, I do, like I do take a second, even if it's during game and I probably shouldn't, <laughs> to, like, to look around and be like, this is cool. Um, not many people get to do this and Definitely. Just be really appreciative oh, of it. That's a great one. Fair play. That's Most brilliant. Most people would still be on that bench, like, and would not have got, gotten up off it in the first place. No. Yeah, that would yeah, have been I'm, the end of it, like. I'm you know? seriously impressed. <laughs> no, yeah. Can I ask you about the knee injury? I know I'm kind of blabbing on about it, but it's just amazing. How did you get through the knee? How did it happen first? And then how did you get it? Through was it was the first contact in a game versus uh, against Railway, and two people kind of came and tackled my foot, stayed planted, and it oh, just, it just, it just went, gone. it just went. And I, I was like, okay. It's, no, I got up and then I tried to squat in it, oh and you could hear just you could hear the pop, Whew. and then I was like, oh, I think I'm okay, and then I tried to do it again, and I was like, nope, nope, and um, so went off the pitch and um, sat in a tackle bag. One of the men's players from Old Belvo very soundly went and got me a gin and tonic. <laughs> So I sat, I sat oh in a, a tackle bag, bawling my eyes out with the gin and tonic. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then found out that night, went to the hospital and found out. Because it was so swollen, you couldn't... I just got an x-ray first, and they okay. had to wait until... And then it was kind of like, OK, right, and that was, that was even longer. That was 18 months. Oh, of, my God. Yeah, the watch, sitting down, yeah. But, like, so many elastic bands, so many physios, so, like... All your ligaments are gone. And your meniscus. Yeah, double meniscus. And it's a really unusual tear. It was like a horseshoe tear and then a regular tear as well. So when the surgeon went in to patch it up, he was like, I was actually really excited. It was a horseshoe tear. So I was like, great, good for you. I'm really glad. Yeah. Silver lining. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Very nice surgeon, though. Thank you very much, Connor Henson. Oh, lovely stuff. Yeah. Well, that's an 18 months as well. Amazing. Fair play yeah. to you. That's incredible stuff. But like on a more positive note, yeah. we actually got a question in. You know, talking about you know playing in any jersey that you, you've played in, you give it all. What's the toughest match that you've had in the Irish jersey, 15s in particular? You know, um, like let me see. 
Do you know, one that was probably really frustrating was the third, fourth playoff versus France in the 2014 World Cup final, just because we we lost the game. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, we made some poor decisions. Um, like, England spanked us in the semi-final, deservedly so, and went on to win a World Cup. And I wouldn't have any arguments for that game, but that getting that participation medal when you mm. really wanted a bronze sucked. Um, so that one probably would have been like a, a tough one at the time. Um, there's been a few, but like that one kind of sticks out a little bit, yeah. But talking about the green jersey as well, I only said to the lads there last week, I'd love to see you back, as many would, in the, in the Irish jersey. And the way the women's team is at the moment and your past um, playing for sevens and fifteens, is it something that you would like to maybe look ahead for, looking for selection for the Irish? Women's team? Oh, Janie, um, like, Say yes. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, I've loved my time in the green jersey, mm -hmm. but um, I love my job. I kind of like having a social life a little bit now as well. Like that all, that's all null and void once you say that. And I, like, I think you have to be a hundred percent. You have to do it a hundred percent, and you have to love it. And I'd feel, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm never going to say never, but. Um, I think they've got a really good coach now. Greg is unbelievable. Thanks. Really lovely. <laughs> <laughs> He's trained you actually before in the World Cup. Yeah, Greg, wasn't Greg it? was my back coach in 2013, yeah. 2014. So he's a, he's a really good dude, and I'm really excited to see him um, see him work with the girls. But uh, like you know, the bang of osteoporosis off me now. I think like, <laughs> like let's leave it to the youth. Like oh my god, you really stuck out stuck up for everyone in the Irish context. Women's against Anthony Eddy. Um, he obviously came out with his interview last month and we spoke about that. You said your piece about it, Megan, as well. What do you think that ha has happened there overall? Can we get kind of a summary of how you feel about what he said? I just think it was pr pretty poor. Um, just as a whole, like speaking about a team like that is unacceptable. Um, and if you're a player involved in that squad, I can imagine you'd probably be deeply hurt. You want Everyone wants an Irish team to do well, regardless of whatever gender they are. And if this was any other business, and if the director had such poor results and had consistently not hit any of the K K KPIs that he had set out, he would be fired. Um, I don't think he's the right man for the job. He hasn't been for a while. And I don't know why he's still around. And like, I know that's particularly harsh, but no. I've got nothing to lose now anyway. <laughs> and there's plenty of other players that would say the same. Yeah. I think women's rugby in this country deserves better and he's not the man for the job. Do you think there might be a little bit of fear um, of Irish players to speak out about the, the issue happening because they might not get selected in the future? 100%. Like, and, and you wouldn't. Like, mm -hmm. there were, I remember being in camp and mm -hmm. being afraid to say things both in sevens and in fifteens because it, it could possibly be used against you. Yeah, so there's that, that like weight off your shoulders when suddenly you realise, actually, I don't care or the consequences of saying something or not outweigh it. So like I obviously am quite passionate about it. Yeah. I, mean, I would imagine you'd be the same as well. But uh, yeah, there, there would be... There is a fear to say. There is, because so they, they have the power. Well, You've you know? got so much power. Mm -hmm. Like the women's team, women's players in this country, they don't play for any financial incentive. You probably lose money playing for your country. Mm -hmm. And that's like fine. That's like not particularly good enough. But like you go into that with your eyes open, understanding that. But you do expect to be given to be given support in order for you to do well and achieve as best as you can. And I would really question, had the, was the team given enough support in the lead up to World Cup qualifiers? Yeah. And like they were underperforming and they, the girls have put up their hands and been like, yeah, we haven't played well, but I haven't been helped by the union either. Yeah. I think the breath of fresh air, like for us looking in, like for the last number of years, we've it's been blatantly obvious there's been issues that not related to the players' performance. There's been issues behind the scenes. It's blatantly obvious, but uh, we're so used to listen to the usual, like can excuse my French, PR bullshit that comes out from the IRFU a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and we know there's a lot more going on. And for you to say that, like it's refreshing because hopefully, I mean yeah. it's it's out there, it's in the open now, and it sounds like these players are almost almost being bullied. 
that they can't come out and say anything because if they do, you're dropped. Yeah. And that's not. Well, what I, you I can empathise with it as well because I've been in the seventh setup for the last couple of years and I've just retired, so I can be a bit more open and honest about it all now. Mm -hmm. I was also on the RPI board, on the executive board for the last couple of years, and we've been fighting so hard for the sevens team. That's include the women, so the women's sevens and men's sevens get the exact same. It's all equal across the board, which is the way it should be. But we're paid below minimum wage to yeah. be. On, and we've gotten to World Series. Series will be players Ireland, just for players Ireland, Ireland, yeah. for, for gotten to World Series, a World Cup, and an Olympics off full time training, getting paid below minimum wage. Man, mm. you're not going to stick in a job that pays you below minimum wage. <laughs> so we've been fighting so hard to get more money. Just pay us a livable wage to live in Dublin yeah. to play the game. So it's the same. It's just like it's just not fair. Like you're not. Mm. Um, so I can really empathise with you how frustrating it is. And then we've tried so many times to get people to come together and yeah. maybe strike and. You know, but it's people fall to the side because they get worried about getting not getting yeah. picked. Do you know it's the same kind of yeah. kind of thing? Like so, look, it, Irish rugby is unbelievable. There's just it, not everyone knows the true story, and I'm delighted mm -hmm. that you spoke up, and I've tried to speak up a couple of times. Um, the 15s is going really well, but I just think a little bit more support is needed for the women's and the sevens. I don't know if yeah. you agree, Megan. Yeah, no, I would agree with you, Greg. That's you know you've just retired as well, and one of the incentives, one of the reasons why I had to leave as well was financially I couldn't support yeah. where I was living and being in Dublin. You know yourself. I had to go and work full time. You had to give it up. You either train full time and play, but you know you're living in really small student kind of accommodation, yeah. or you have to go work and, and pay for your rent. Yeah. Like, That's you know? the same thing. So, I didn't want to retire. Yeah. I'm no, 26. I, I wanted to play until I couldn't walk anymore. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I can't stay in a job that's not mm -hmm. making me money. Like, yeah. and same with a couple other lads that retired. Now it was unreal. We got out because we played in the Olympics, which is a lovely way yeah. to finish. But Amazing, do you know yeah. what I mean? But you what incentive is there for, for, for young men and women coming up? Like if young men and women want to play sevens or women who want to play for the national team, where that there's no support there for you. Um, you're going to play for Ireland. You're going to have a, mm -hmm. you're going to, it's going to be amazing. You're going to come out in the Viva Stadium and whatnot. But uh, you'll have no money. You won't pay rent. You won't be able to do this. Uh, you'll get no support. And if you say anything about it, you're a uh, dropping team. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so yeah. People really. looking in, you know, might see... see like the media side of things for the women's game is absolutely amazing. Like you can't fault that at all. Yeah. But there needs to be a lot more to be done. And Jenny, you're 100 percent right. Yeah, but let's move on. Yeah. To yeah. Well, being, we can talk about this. Cheer things up a little bit. There's one more right. point. The devil's Go advocate on. argument back to what we're all saying okay. is that yeah. look at it in a business sense. Yes. Is that we're the sevens men, women, and the fifteens women aren't bringing in enough revenue to yeah. match being paid. That's what the, our counter argument would be. Okay. But then the counter argument to that is start funding us. We can perform better, and we will bring in more Correct. revenue. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's 100%. just you feel it like it's yeah. cyclical. Yeah. Like if you kind of give it more support, the rugby will be stronger, and that in turn can. And there's also really marketable players there as well. Like so, I think you just have to be quite savvy about it. Like yeah. you look at like the women's NBA. And what they're doing, they've invested it properly, they've been smart, it's not a copy and paste job. Yeah. And the same should be for the women's game here. There's like players that are outstanding role models yeah. and will like shove them in front of a camera, let them talk, let them play rugby, yeah. support them that little bit more, and like eventually the money and stuff will come in. I think yeah. it's just same with when the men's first went professional. Like you, you look back at some of those games now and like they were stink. <laughs> they were, yeah. the early 2000s, it was like, let's avoid the wooden spoon, essentially. Like, to stay the men's team back then, and, but they gave them the resources so that over time they could do it, as you said. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Finally, so we have one more question from uh, Laugh 2008. This is a tough enough question, actually. He wants to know what was the best team camaraderie moment you've had? So, kind of a moment where something happened before, during, after a game where you kind of, oh, we had each other's backs there. Um, I think in the. There's been a few. It's actually really nice to have to be like, oh, I have to kind of narrow yeah. it down a little bit. One would be in in 2014, we we're going to the World Cup. We were in the group of death as well. There was, so it was the USA, uh, uh, New Zealand and Kazakhstan. New Zealand hadn't been beaten in 16 years at that stage. And we were kind of written off. We were third. We were expected to come third in that group. Beat a really physical uh, USA team and then it was kind of like, oh, they did, the girls did great, but that's the end of the journey. They're facing the black for ferns. And we're re in a really good bubble. I'm saying that now in COVID times is a bit weird, but it was a positive one of like, uh, like everyone was kind of like really confident going into that game and like had a, knew exactly what their job was, knew exactly what their role was. And it was, there was no like, it wasn't cockiness, it was just a lot of assurance. We'd worked so hard in the lead up to that. Mm. I mean, like an amazing SNC coach, Marion Earls, um, Goose, Greg, um, Brack, we, they were all involved. And it was just the whole thing was so tight knit. So going into that, 
I think we were down at some point and we were just, we were comfortable defending and we were comfortable when like they were kind of, the floodgates were kind of going, there was this black wall constantly at us. Yeah, and it was, to get the win afterwards, it was so lovely and everyone else was so shocked and we were kind of like, yeah, job done, next one. Yeah. And it's only when you look back at it now, you're like, oh, that was... That was cool. That was good, <laughs> yeah. 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 Amazing, that's a great oh, story. Well, look, you've been a great story. sport anyway. I mean, I don't know, they weren't too hard, were they? They weren't too hard. They weren't too hard. But uh, we go back to the ORC action. Um, I can't believe it. It's been what? How many weeks now? So we've had the full Autumn Nation series this week and last week. And we're and once again, we've no Monster Match to talk about because they, they no match again the weekend. So I'm going to like, okay? have to quit the yeah. show, guys, unless there's a Monster Match soon. <laughs> I, I'm so, I, don't know, I don't know what else to talk about. But uh, Four months or something. We're still in I South know. Africa. Yeah, it's in like, we, obviously, we chatted about it last week. It's been a, an evolving story. But thankfully, they got. Most of, of their home, team yeah. home and most mm. of their, their, their staff home. There's, I don't know how many's left, but it was 36 that got back, including staff. I think there's about 14 lads still is in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so they, the, the rest of them got home, but they had to go into 20, 10 day days quarantine. Outside, which is obviously, they have mm. to like us again from South Africa, but that is completely messing up not only their professional rugby, but their lives. Man, it's like, bloody yeah. Christmas, People like. have families, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Get presents and all that stuff. I can only imagine how stressed yeah. they are down in South Africa. Yeah, forget about the rugby, like, yeah. get these guys home for Christmas. Do you mm. know what I mean? Sure get them home today, know their, their last minute shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine the wives, how stressed they are. Oh, yeah. God. Like, if, 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 like, a lot of those like, the players would have young kids and stuff at home yeah. then as well, and it could be, some of them could be their first Christmas or second Christmas yeah. home and everything that's going on with COVID and everything. Mm. I mean, I think everyone was expecting a bit of a normal Christmas this year. It's far from normal mm. for those that 13 or 14 lads that it's, are over there. Is it going to really affect the next games for Munster? Because a lot of the academy players, they were saying, might have to play in this game and there could be a bit of a safety issue. No one knows. Well, the, the EPCR changed uh, the registration rules during the week. So they like you're allowed to bring in as many players as you want mm. up until a certain date just before the first match. So... There's going to be some guys that are, have to be brought in. They have their internationals there, but they've got wasps away from home or humming away in the Premiership. and It's not, not ideal preparations. They haven't played a match in, as we said, four or five weeks, six weeks, whatever it is. Yeah, something like that, yeah. There was cool. even talk to say that they might even ask, no, it's probably just hearsay, but they were going to maybe ask some other players from different provinces to come in and play. During those big positions. Yeah, I don't really? know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Talking on a podcast. Wow. But. <laughs> Mo moving on to the other games. Um, Edinburgh versus Benetton. So um, Edinburgh picked up the win there, 24 10. Uh, Benetton, obviously, they've had an up, up and down season, but Edinburgh are pulling out some, some good results. Edinburgh are playing well. Um, we haven't, really second, we haven't spoke about them at all. I don't remember actually discussing Edinburgh much, but now they're up to second yeah, in the standings. They're getting, they've, they've won the last three or four. Like they're kind of they're, they're, they're flying under the radar, kind of humming away nicely, mm. picking up wins when they're not expected to yeah, pick them up. Yeah, they're doing really well. Darcy Graham on the wing can't stop scoring. He's got, mm. he's, he got the opening try. They had a lovely 3 2 off a of Morgan down the right yep. side. Poor defence out of Benetton, but still a great try. And then Boffelli, uh, Argentinian guy we've spoken about yep. a couple of times in this team. Yep. His first match for Edinburgh. He came on and scored after a lovely Edinburgh team move. They were just too strong for, for Treviso. Uh, did you watch the game? Did you get to see it? Yeah, I watched a bit of it. I really rated their scrum half, Ben Valakus, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. probably butchering that name. but He's fast. Yeah, and dynamic. just like really, like a really high tempo nine um, that's constantly kind of swinging around mm -hmm. there. So like pulling in those tight defenders. Um, I know he was called into, but he wasn't called into the Scottish camp actually for the autumn internationals. And I was kind of keeping an eye. I was surprised that he wasn't, but obviously we were chatting before, but there is a lot of competition in that, uh, in that area anyway, or in Scotland, they're kind of tipping yeah, away nicely sure Ali too, Price so. playing there, he's playing unbelievable as well. He played really well the weekend, so mm. yeah, it was great. Well, I thought for... um, the number 10, Blair Kinghorn, was outstanding. I think he got player of the match for that game, but he set up the first two tries for the game and then scored the third himself, mm. and he was all over the park. Yeah. And he linked up really well with that winger, Darcy, like you said. Yeah, he and did, yeah. They were a great comeback. The try he scored was a funny one, I don't know if you saw it, but yeah. Benetton tried to play out at her own 22, oh, and the poor number eight yeah. then yeah. tried to swing. Well, he just carry it in, <laughs> set it up and exit like and just yeah. the 10 just dotted it down. Questionable grounding now if you, if you watch yeah. it back but um, yeah. look Edinburgh were just too strong for Benetton. Yeah, they get rounded it off for the Stuart and Ali try for the fourth try to roll them all but yeah. just on Kinghorn it's just interesting to see him like he was an absolute class full back and he started a game at 10 for Scotland during the Autumn Nation Series as well didn't he? The, I, think, I think he started, sorry, he started the very first game it was outside the window I can't remember who they played the, the week the week one, but it's another option there for Edinburgh. It's another option there for Scotland. Mm. But in Edinburgh, I think Edinburgh, like I mean, they're up to second the table. Edinburgh could could 
potentially yeah. challenge this year. They could, time, and their, the, their the new stadium is really good. The venue they're playing in, yeah. they're really good support. You could hear it in the crowd every time Edinburgh scored. There was a massive cheer. I actually would like notably stopped. I was like, why are they cheering so much? Like, you know, they're just scoring yeah. against. I know it's really rude against Benetton. Like, yeah, yeah. They scored four tries, and so obviously you just have a their really own home good, now. Like, you know, kind of yeah, like, yeah. like they're not playing a Murrayfield like home fortress. Like, so um, Edinburgh one to watch definitely for sure. Definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, the next game we had was the, the first debut for all South African match. There was yeah. DHL Stormers versus uh, the Lions, which yeah. was a, a great game. But I think, first of all, we need to acknowledge Gianni Duplessis. You've, you've heard the story there with him. Yeah, his poor 10 month old son drowned yeah. only a month ago yeah, at, on nice. Duplessis' birthday. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how he had the mental strength to even get up and play the yeah. game. Like, he got an amazing. incredible reception when he came on. I mean, just to come back. Mm -hmm. so quickly but well, I suppose look I mean it's his profession maybe, maybe that was his decision just to get on and just, I, I need to get back out I need to do my job and get on with my life I suppose to a certain extent but I don't know yeah, well, I think Jenny was saying it might, they might have a really tight knit team and it's just kind of a safe space for him to be in Like, but could you imagine the, what yeah. he's going through like yeah I, I don't know I can only kind of empathise mm -hmm. but like obviously I think it, I think it says a lot about the team that maybe that's his safe place or he wants to be around people then it might be really close knit so I can only just I can't imagine what himself and her family are going through. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. But it was it was a great win for the Lions so you know especially when they uh, trailed down 12-10 tw um, after half an hour and they conceded two tries in the first four minutes yeah. of the match as well so. And to still get the win after after that was a really good win for them. Yeah. And uh, another standout player was Berger, uh, Odendale, he had three line breaks and 94 metres made in the game. Um, and another it was Frank Horn, who scored two tries and made 24 tackles in the game. That's, that's impressive, not 24 tackles. Like 24 tackles in a season. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. So uh, shout out to those guys. It was a good good to see uh, the two South African teams going up against each other. <laughs> good match. Um, another match as well to talk about just quickly is um, the Glasgow Warriors, 31 vs the Dragons, 14. Um, I, ca I didn't catch, I only caught the first half of that match, um, but, you know, Glasgow Warriors, they've been kind of really, really consistent with their wins, haven't they? You know, they had a bit of an off put last week, but um, big game against yeah. the Dragons. I think Scottish Rugby is in a good place at the moment, really. Yeah. Like, I mean, Edinburgh are coming a long way, Glasgow getting some good wins, Scotland looked well in the autumn. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's good. The Dragons, I do feel sorry for the Dragons. Like, Dragons are playing some good rugby. If you've watched much of them this year, this year, Dad, Jenny, they've been playing good rugby, but they've been unlucky. Yeah, like I think, I think with the Welsh unions and stuff, it's a bit unusual. I'm not too sure how much. I know that it's it's, it's the weakest yeah. of the sides there too, and like I know they've had yeah. like the likes of someone experienced like Jamie Roberts in camp is obviously really valuable. But I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying he's now maybe a little bit more vintage yeah. than <laughs> um, than than other centres. Um, but uh, he's pushing he, on. He's, he's <laughs> well, like obviously still extremely physical presence, yeah. smart player. Hugely skillful, yeah. But they, I don't like they're they've been struggling for they've been performing in patches, but Sit. in terms of actually getting wins yeah. on paper, yeah. Uh, that big win against Connacht really that was about it, really, wasn't it? Yeah. They've won or win, but as I said, it's frustrating to watch. But looking at the game itself, uh, Sione, uh, I don't pronounce this now, to Palatu dashed over for the opening try and uh, Kyle Skane then yeah, it was his first try for Glasgow oh, as well excellent yeah. excellent. Uh, Kyle Skane then scored in the corner after a lovely crossfield kick for the second try copying Jack Carty's and <laughs> Mac Hansen's it was literally like nearly a carbon copy of it yeah, uh, yeah it was a good, great try and then we had Jack Dempsey as well who Cracked. scored against against yeah. the heads picked the ball up at yeah. top of the scrum and just darted we, the whole way through he's nominated up. for a try yeah. we'll see him in our try the yeah. weekend later on but uh, surely there's Irish heritage in there you were thinking with the name Jack Dempsey yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely 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 definitely. because we don't have any back rows yeah, <laughs> yeah. we just need another yeah. one yeah. <laughs> but uh, no I mean a good win from overall um, we'll move on to the next game that's uh, a second South African derby um, this is a big big game here um, the, obviously the Sharks beat the Bulls 30-16 but we had two huge Springboks coming back into this game with um Captain Sia Khaleesi and the man himself, who can you and a guy where we can't stop talking about a guy. You, mm -hmm. I think we were saying it off air. We say it off air every week, and anyone who comes on the show is like, "Why is this man not nominated for World Player of the Year?" It's 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 ridiculous. I can't believe he's not. He just does everything right. Every time he touches the ball, he plays well. What do you make of him as a centre? Oh, I I I rate him like such smart decisions defensively, in particular. What like now? I know I would be biased, but like. 13 defensively is it's, it's a hard position to play in and he hardest, consistently yeah. makes like similar to Ringrose who I think has been like on the up um, since like 
jaw jawbreak. Um, yeah. That sounded like some like jawbreak um, <laughs> Watergate esque thing. Yeah. Um, but like, just a phenomenal talent, and you can see why teams like South Africa as well will pivot and build a game plan around someone that talented. Mm. Um, obviously, really physical, hugely sil- skillful player too. But like, I think one of his is just so intelligent, mm. both in terms of like actually reading the game and bringing in other players. Like he like involves the wingers so well and um, yeah I think it's it's um, difficult to comprehend why he's not kind of up there for world player yeah I can't, he's a very selfless player I think every time yeah. he makes a break he looks to give it away man Peepee scored so many tries off yeah. world cup like that yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. even Pop-up. the other day against England he gave him one And but in that game he's just defensively yeah. incredible he shot up at, at one time and read the ball got an intercept try ran the length of the pitch yeah like he's just I don't know how he did he does all the basics so well and then he's also a human highlight reel as well like I mean you go back as far as the rugby championship when he had that around the back pass mm. you know yeah. against New Zealand like some of the stuff he does is kind of like he can do as you said he can shoot and defence he can tackle he's just he's passing is incredible he gets everyone involved but every now and then he can just do something outworldly mm. he seems <laughs> quite modest as well I obviously don't know him but he doesn't seem to much about him. celebrate yeah. and doesn't yeah. seem to shout or cause any has to like mm. and I think he's captain the the side a couple of times as yeah. well so he's obviously a leader so yeah. I don't know who's picking the world rugby nominations yeah. but he should have been in there my opinion. <laughs> it was a good derby now but like the I think the balls um really gave it to the sharks yeah. it was really really close at one point um and Chamberlain, but I think the Bulls um, gave away so many penalties. Yeah. They just let the Sharks get into the match. I think Chamberlain scored most of the yeah. um, the points from the boot. He had a great game as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chamberlain's a great player. Yeah, you can't was, be giving him any penalties. Like he'll just keep slotting them over. He was great early as well. Caught a lot of balls, played well. So yeah, it was a decent game. It wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't the best. I think I need to give a shout out to uh, Bongi. Bonambi, he was back. Uh, he's the the front row forward. He's uh, he looked class for the Sharks too. Yeah, um, he played he played really well. Good to see him playing well. Um, but I think we're moving on to nominations for try of the weekend now. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. So the first one was this incredible try: Jack Carty kicking it to Mac Hansen, who can not stop scoring. I know I say it all the time, but I'm going to be a rugby nerd here again. You know I love the technique. The jump he does here to catch this ball is perfect. Off his left foot, right knee up into Larmer. Like Jordan's never getting near that ball. And puts it down beautifully. That's yeah. an incredible try. I just... It's hard to defend that though with Jordan Lama. He's like tracing backwards, you know. Yeah, he's never going to get there. No. Um, Bit of air handsome. Yeah. So up next here, this is uh, Dan Sheehan's try. I mean, this is absolutely. What kind of hooker is able to step like that? I mean, the speed he shows, like. No, it's like I'd say something if it was just a quick set, but he actually shows How is him. He, a hooker? he steps out right, <laughs> steps back in. He kind of gives it like it's kind of a goose leg. And like, I mean, there's wingers out there that can't do that. There's, you know, look at that. It's absolutely outrageous. I mean, the battle that himself and Keller are going to have for the next few years with Leinster and, and Ireland, like, I mean, that is, look. And, and who he did it to. It's Mac Hansen as well, yeah. Mac Hansen. Twinkle toes himself. So it's not as if he did that against a four. Like, yeah. He, he probably wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned him earlier, Jack, Jack Dempsey. This is a great try um, from the back of the, they won that scrum there and he just, Trails through 35 meters to score, beating three defenders there. Yeah, that was against the head as well. So shout out to the front row, Glasgow. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, he must be Irish. I know, I know he's Australian, but a name like that, like he has to be Irish, guys. Yeah. <laughs> he has to have ancestors or something. Maybe we, maybe we can poach him and bring him back. I don't. It's not like we need any more backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as Jenny was saying. Um, so three unbelievable tries. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know which one I'd pick. What do you think, Jenny? Um, I'm going to sit on the fence and not pick one. But I'll, I'll, <laughs> you I'll have to pick to... one. It's a vote. You have to pick one. Uh, which um, one are you not picking first? Um, okay, I'm not going to pick, even though all the front row are going to be giving it stink. I'm not going to pick the Jack Dempsey one. It was extremely impressive, yeah. really powerful run. Thought the nine should have probably done a bit better. Yeah. Um, but it's between Jack Carty's crossfield kick or hot step and hooker. Uh, whichever, Sheehan. whichever one you want. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have to pick one. <laughs> We're going to walk our fence again. I'm, Dan Sheehan I'm, I'm or Mac Hansen. I'm, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Dan Sheehan. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Greg. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to go with Dan Sheehan as well, just yeah. because of the context. It's a hooker against a winger, and it was incredible. So yeah. yeah I would be the same. I thought it was super impressive. Like you just don't see hookers do that. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. I'm exactly. It's the first time we managed to get four of us actually agreeing on the same try. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, Dan, fair play to you. Stop that. Yeah, I just slated Jack Dempsey's try for no reason at all. It was a really good try. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff, great stuff. Well, uh, look, moving on anyway to my favourite award, the jukebox of the week. So we've got three contenders this week. Up first is uh, Alex Cuppert, absolutely smashing. Poor John Cooney. Uh, Cuppert still has a bit of meat on him these days. Uh, big Welsh winger 
I mean, he comes on to this and, oh. oh I can't believe Cuthbert is still playing. That's, he's, he's a big boy. The second one here is Josh van de Flair and Connor Oliver colliding and causing a crack in the earth with this huge hit. Yeah, he bumped him off there pretty well, doesn't he? Like how many metres after contact this season does Josh van der Fleer have? I, I, I think we've kind of accepted the fact he that was, he's not human. No. <laughs> and this one is kind of a double. It's Am and uh, Kosi. Uh, unbelievable hit. The acceleration into that, and he actually, I think, might have done his shoulder here. It's not confirmed, but look at that. Per technically perfect. Technically perfect, Such but it's, it's just... a shame that he just, hurt himself there. Yeah, well, yeah. Wait, wait, is it because he hits his hip or something? His shoulder closes his hip leg, so he's just hitting a what pretty he, hard bone as he's going see, in. He just slingshots himself into him. That just completely exposing your shoulder, like you've probably done it a couple of times now. Um, he could have easily uh, popped out his shoulder. Hopefully he didn't, because he's an incredible player. Yeah. I've yeah. done that. I tackled someone, I've dislocated my collarbone. And it's oh. not nice. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not nice, nice at all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the winner? Course, Jenny, come Jenny. on. We, we need to vote off you again. So. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go. I think, like, purely just for a uh, defensive read as well, it's going to be shoulder injury. So that Sharks kind of double hit. Yeah. Um, that would be, that'd be okay. my choice. What's your thing, Greg? Um, not Alex Corporate, anyway. I just, it just wasn't for me. So it's going to be, I think, we'll go uh, with the South African uh, double hit. Yeah, it was more okay. impressive, yeah. Oh, I was going to say that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was textbook. Really well, good. I was actually going to go give it to Van der Fleer because the whole point he of this... He always wins I, everything. We're coming up with this award first. It's for me, like it was like jukebox was a big massive fend or a big bop. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's that's just... It just signifies it's it's what jukebox is. But you didn't you get your award, man. Just, no, no, yeah. no. I mean, look, you're taking it away from me. You can give it to Nicosi. <laughs> that's fine. But okay, uh, so I'm going to give it to you, Josh. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Um, there's some <laughs> more news um, in the rugby world at the moment, specifically as well. We're talking about the women's game. Some huge news for them coming up in the Six Nations starting in March. Three home matches um, in Belfast, Dublin, and Cork. What are your thoughts on? Um, on the home games, Jenny, do you think it's going to be um, you benefit us, you know, to get those wins that we need? Yeah, like home games, especially spreading it around Musgrave yeah. Park, um, playing up in Belfast as well. It's great. You get like, you know, fans all the time having to constantly go to Dublin, and they do and they travel, and the team really appreciate it. But it's it's great to kind of spread around the game a little bit, um, and kind of get it. Yeah. up in the other provinces as well. So like, yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, the great big news bit. there as well is the fact that they've got a big, huge TV deal mm -hmm. in there as well. It's going to be broadcast in, in England and Ireland across the three terrestrial networks as a Channel 4, right. BBC and RT. And then they've also moved there permanently now to, to April and... So yeah, it's kind of March, April, March is it April, April, yeah. or is it April going to do? So straight after the men's Six Nations, so it kind of gives us. I mean, for rugby fans, it's absolutely brilliant because we it's just have non-stop Six yeah. Nations yeah. for four months. It's not yeah. going to overlap any games because, yeah. like last year, I think there was um, so, some of the women's matches weren't at the same time as the men's, and we couldn't see them all. Like, so yeah, it's a shame. It's, but it's stupid. Like, yeah. like, even if even if it's that's the same thing as even if it was two men's games or two women's mm. games, put them on at the same time. Yeah. Let it give us an opportunity to watch everything. If you want to grow the women's game, if you want to grow sevens, everything like. You can't just put it on at the same time as another huge game that's on because don't make people pick. Give them yeah, a chance to yeah, watch you're both. You're dividing the eyeballs. Yeah, like, exactly. So. I mean, you know what I mean. So it's 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 great for the game and it's yeah. great to see. You're dead right, Jason. Uh, more news from the world of rugby. Whereas the RPI Rugby Players Ireland Awards were uh, only a couple of days ago on Friday, and Robbie Henshaw got Players Player of the Year, yep. which is incredible to get voted by your own teammates. I don't know what you you make of that. Uh, getting voted by your own players is. is Better, I, think, I, think that's something, I think that's something special. Yeah, yeah it's just yeah. kind of like it's all the extra stuff that like your teammates kind of like. Yeah, I, I, I like it's it's something different. You get a vote of approval from the players that you play alongside. Yeah. It's definitely has yeah. a a different uh, tint to it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We also Gavin Coombe got Young Player of the Year, yeah. Yeah. and Dorothy Wall got a uh, Best Young Player and Best Women's Player. It's impressive. Um, <laughs> she, have you played with Dorothy? Never played with Dorothy. I've seen her really impressive. Um, mm. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing her grow into the game even more, yeah. get more experience. So yeah, like one to one to look out for. Well, she's already got the two big awards. So like, <laughs> yeah. so, like and she's only eight, 19, 18, 19, isn't yeah. she? Yeah, she's definitely one to watch for yeah, sure. She's Jenny. a hard trainer as well. I've seen her in the seven yeah. setup, and she's always doing extras, always in the gym doing stuff. So I can see why she's gotten those awards. Give her a good um, confidence boost as well going into the Six Nations now too. Hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah, looking at the Champions Cup, obviously we won't touch on that too much. We've already spoken about Munster and their problems with Wasps, but um, obviously we've got the, the the bat game then as well with Leinster. We've got Connacht playing Star Francais. Ulster are playing Northampton. Uh, sorry, excuse me, last to follow me. Ulster are playing Claremont away from home, so I think that's not going to be an easy game for Ulster. But uh, 
yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting. I'm looking forward to the Champions Cup comeback. Obviously, not as good as the URC, but. You know. <laughs> There's a lot of rugby going on. Yeah. But there's also actually the sevens as well. Greg, you've been watching them in Dubai at the moment? Yeah, so the boys are back in Dubai. The first seven series tournament back in two years. Um, Dubai this weekend. They actually played last weekend in Dubai as well, but there was no crowd. And this weekend they played again in Dubai, but the crowd were allowed this time, so they just funneled everyone into the same weekend. The lads had um, really close matches. They did. I was talking to a few of them. They're all absolutely yeah. wrecked. We're playing in like 40 degree heat, like, you know, for two weeks training there as well. <laughs> Irish lads, do you know what I mean? I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I was watching oh, it. So I was hard. watching the boys, and obviously you're watching the highlights. I was like, oh, do I miss it? I kind of do. And then I was talking to them, and they were a lot like wrecked. And yeah. I was like, that's why. When you're watching it, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh my god, I wish I was there. Like, and then you remember, like in the moment, you're like, yeah. how painful it is in yeah. that heat. But, um, exactly. Oh. But they did. The boys did well. They got to the quarter final this weekend against Australia. They narrowly lost 24-19. I could be wrong, but it was something like that. Um, so they played well. Terry Kennedy mm -hmm. and Jordan Conway were ripping it up as yep. per usual. The two of them, and they had such a funny interview as well, which is really good at watch if you look it up on Instagram. But also shout out to the women's sevens team. They yep. beat GB, which is yep. a big win. Yeah, yeah. They, didn't, they didn't have the best first day. Like um, they had three losses, but again, really close matches. But then they. Um, three, two big wins um, against the GB and USA. And, um, I think they lost Canada. to USA, Canada. Canada, Canada. Canada yep. So um, they did really well in the second day. You know yourself coming out in the second day and getting the wins is incredibly difficult. Um, and they they really really stuck it to him. Yeah. They had super uh, matches. And another shout out to Amy Lee Murphy Crow getting mm -hmm. her hundred tries. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yeah. She is it, what a player. Yeah. We played with Amy Lee yeah. ever since she was like eighteen. She just came into the squad. Yeah. Unbelievable. She's amazing. Yeah. Like just like an eye for for tries the whole time so pacey such yeah. a hard worker um, lovely girl as well and just yeah. like yeah super science yeah. do you know what I love seeing with the women's setup now is that they're bringing the sevens players in to play 15s which is incredible like Stacey Flood, Flood has played 10 a couple of times like you have Lucy Mulhall has been in hasn't she um, which I love seeing that that they're getting the opportunities and using all the, the girls across both disciplines when you wish they did it with the sevens lads now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had a few come in the last few years like uh, Hugo Keenan will they, do? Will they go back through Leinster and Munster and stuff yeah, like that I suppose like, yeah, yeah they're not coming straight in but um, unfortunately lads that's all we've got time for I know we could sit down and talk about uh, Anthony Eddie for another hour and a half if you like oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we won't well, I'm only I was only going to say, Greg, I'm not sure Jenny agrees with uh, the 7s and 15s being mixed, but I'm not sure. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would probably not. Oh, so that's wait, why we could see her so, face yeah. and I was like... Yeah, so that's oh, for, yeah. That's for <laughs> another week. We don't want to talk about that. that. No, no, we're going to have to wrap up the show there. We're going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> oh, I, did, I like it. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you on, Jenny. Thanks for having me, guys. You were a super guest, Jenny. Say that to everyone, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keeping right. in your good books. <laughs> oh, you're great. Thanks very much, Jenny. Thanks, and thanks again, of course, to our partners, Bank of Ireland, proud sponsors of the four Irish provinces. We'll be back again at the end of December for more URC action. But until then, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, guys. Joe presents House of Rugby, United Rugby Championship, together with Bank of Ireland, proud supporter of the four Irish provinces.